Herzlich willkommen beim 36. Internationalen Dokumentarfilmfest. A warm welcome to the 36th International Documentary Festival here in Munich. Um, as we all know, we can't have our guests with us in Munich. Uh, so we decided to build a studio and we have uh, the pleasure and that we are here in the Deutsches Museum in right in the center of Munich. And they have not only the Grand Theater where we have our openings with 1,200 guests, but also little um, ballrooms where they give balls and reception and the like. And we are today honored to be in the Silver Hall of the Deutsches Theater in München. Uh, today we're going to talk about a film, No Hai Camino, by Hedy Honigmann. Unfortunately, she can't be with us, but her producer, El Productor, Peter van Huisthe, is with us today, and I'm very glad to welcome you. Welcome, Peter. Well, thank you to be the guest of yeah. your festival yeah. and uh, yeah. show our films. Yeah. So, um, uh, you can't see right now the surroundings here, but we'll see that uh, later on. It's an honor you were here two years ago uh, when we had uh, our retrospective with Hedy Honigman and you moderated two films, and also you are not only um, uh, our guest today, but you are also the producer of No Hike uh, Camino. And uh, there is another thing what I have to do is this is not only the producer. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is schlecht an. Paul, ich kann es ganz schlecht sehen. Vielleicht richtest du kurz ein. Peter, we have to do it again. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. Ja. Du, können wir den Ansager, den Aufsager am Ende noch mal nachdrehen? Genau. Ja. ja. Okay. Ja. Okay. Ja. Ja, das ist Nadel, weil ich kann nicht selbst sehen, ob er, äh, ob er tegen me, äh, tegen me drei ansieht. Ja, ja, ja. Ja, zat tegen me drei aan. Um, So, once again, Peter, you're not only the producer of Hedy Honigman from the film, uh, the internet has it, um, and it has both things, and the one is um, that uh, you have 111 films produced, and uh, not counting No High Camino, which will be 112, and the other magic number is today, it is your birthday today, and so thankful to joining us on your special day, we're grateful for that. Well, so, it's a great birthday yeah, yeah, to be, to yeah, be at, yeah, yeah. at your place. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to start with a question. How is Hedy at the moment? I heard you've talked to her. Yes. Uh, so for the people who don't know, Hedy has always uh, a difficult health. Um, she, she suffers on MS uh, uh, normally. And now uh, the last two years, there's cancer. Um, in her body and uh, that makes her sometimes very uh, weak or that there's not much energy also the cure is 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 sometimes that you become I would say perhaps uh, uh, your mind is sometimes a little bit confused um, but at the same time She is very witty, very funny, and very sharp. Um, and uh, for me, it is, a, it is a wonderful period that I can work with her because we did so many films uh, together and we worked for 25 years together. So producing uh, sometimes in uh, difficult circumstances is, brings you also together. And... Um, in that sense, it is also a wonderful time. You know, uh, you understand each other, you have beautiful conversations with each other. And uh, so how strange it sounds, uh, it, it is a perfect production uh, time together, but also in friendship, uh, what you build during yeah. working together. This is um, glad that tell this because this is exactly what uh, took us for No Hai Camino, her latest film, and uh, that she, for the first time, has made a film about herself. Uh, she is always present in her films, but she's never visible. 
sometimes you hear them, so there's something enigmatic about those, the figure, Hedy Honigman, and all of a sudden she's there. And she's there with all she's got. And what we see is that we accompany her on not a travel, but several travels. Also, they go as far as her, her own sofa. Uh, and we meet people there. And she brings to the film everything that um, she has, her wit, her strength, but also what we learn to know is her disease and the new disease. And, um, and this is a very uh, intriguing moment that this film, which has sad moments, isn't a sad film at all. Is it something that in the work in which headed together was discussed at the tone of the film? Well, let me first explain how the film started, yeah. this idea. Uh, actually, the broadcaster asked me to produce a film uh, making about Hedy. So they suggested a director who would make a film about Hedy and her work. Well, people who know Hedy, she's a wonderful woman, but she is like a cat. You know, if sometimes, uh, if she don't like it, as a cat, she can do like this, you know? And um, so every time the director suggested something, how to do something, she said, no, 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 I don't want that. And um, so you can explain it as you like, uh, but she didn't want to be directed. And um, so I one said on one moment to the broadcaster, well, why not that she direct her own film about herself? And then the broadcaster was a little bit doubting, that's not possible, can you do that? Is that uh, uh, responsible to make a film about yourself? And then I told them the story, well, we have those two famous Dutch painters, Rembrandt and Van Gogh. And they made a lot of uh, self-portraits and they became famous and they became beautiful. So why not ask Hedy to direct the film about herself? Uh, so they agreed. And uh, Hedy says, uh, yeah, uh, what is the film about? I don't know, she says. It is about me and what to tell? I don't know, we will, we will see. And um, of course, I was doubting if it was a good choice we did. But then, uh, when the first material from the first shootings came, uh, an employee of me, uh, a co-worker, how do you say that? Is, yeah. uh, he saw the material, but he never met Hedy in life. And he says, but she's so funny to look at. She's a wonderful person. I said, yeah, okay, but the story, no, but I like looking at her, you know, when they're doing the technical parts of the film. And I said, well, that, that's a good sign. And um, so back to your question. Uh, yes, Hedy is a person who always look at the bright side of life. If you would ask, uh, how's your, uh, how are you today with your health? She said, let's talk about something else, more funny. So she is not a person who likes to drag into her illness. And uh, she likes to be funny and to have a good time. And with her South American temperament, she's from Peru. She can enjoy also compliments. And I think in the Western world, compliments are not fit in our Calvinistic way of looking. It becomes too People say, yeah, yeah, you like to be nice and you want something back of me. No, that's not how we see it. And uh, because my mother was not from a Dutch uh, nationality, she's also from abroad. So I can very good relate to that. You make a nice compliment and you enjoy the day. And, uh, and from there on, you have a nice feeling with each other. And that's in our film. She's always... She's not walking away from it, not at all. She, she discuss her, where she's vulnerable, where she's not nice, where she get critics. But at the same time, yeah, let's enjoy life. Let's enjoy 
even in bad situations, the beautiful parts uh, of life. And that, that's what I hope and what we discussed with each other, back to your question, what this, we talked about it. I, I said it has to be an inspirational film for people that you can relate to it. You know, if I see you, I think of my, let's say, my sister who's ill, or I think of my own illness, but how you can, I would not say, how do I say it in uh, perfect English, but uh, uh, from bad suffering, you make a beautiful suffering. And, and, and that's a quality in life you want to give to other people, you know, you have a bed where you're down and depressive with, because the suffering you have in whatever is your situation, but try to transform it to something, what I say, the good suffering, the beauty of the suffering. And that's not an easy task. That's something we have to learn all our lives. And it is exactly that what uh, does uh, what the film does. It is it takes those facts as a given, and there is fun. There's laughter also. There are very funny moments in the film, but this fun isn't intended to run away from something, but open up a space for other things, because there are encounters with musicians. There's poetry in the film. The title "No High Camino" comes from a poem which is recited by accident. I don't know. In the film, there's this wonderful scene where he starts, where a friend of Hedy starts to recite that poem uh, from the Spanish poet, and then the title appears about, and, and it goes with her and the title, and it's exactly that way that um, this film works also. Um, there's also another thing, of course, and I think um, this is also very Hedy, is uh, since she lived in Amsterdam, she has made nearly every year a film. And this is a gigantic oeuvre what she has built. And um, so it, it, it would be impossible for any other director uh, to choose those moments. And it's very nice to see which moments they chose to incorporate in the film, and also which films, for if you know her work very well, are not in the film. And this is very interesting. So um, did you have a talk about that beforehand, or is it something which developed while making? Uh, well, what we talked about, that uh, the film was not intended to be a kind of biopic, okay. you know, a catalogue of what you made, okay. because then you better can publish a book about yourself or okay. somebody else has to make a biopic, and I, you would ask the people she worked with on their comments how she worked. Uh, that was not the intention. It was the intention to to make this journey, and uh, the journey uh, for her is that she uh, is uh, uh, born in uh, Peru, uh, South America, and she made her pass in, uh, in life, a uh, little period in Israel, in Italy, and then she met uh, uh, her first husband, uh, uh, in Amsterdam, and she became a Dutch filmmaker. Um, so, making all those films and the, the parts we selected uh, is to, to show a bit of this character and how her character developed uh, and what is the essential part of it uh, in her oeuvre. So, for instance, she's been asked by a, a Belgium a good friend of her, Christine Hemmerrechts. She's a well-known writer in uh, Belgium, top, top writer, top of the bill writer. And she asked uh, her uh, to, to, to come to Peru also. Because, why? Because we were also a little bit afraid that if you only have to make a film about yourself, that you don't get critical questions. You need somebody who, who is critical about you, with love, but critical. So we in, uh, invited Christine Hemmerrechts uh, uh, in the film. And she asked a question in the film, 
Hedy, what did you learn about uh, the people in general, about mankind in all these films? And she says, uh, uh, I like to film good people. To only, this, if I teach, I, I always repeat it. It's only worth to make films about good people. But to find the good part in somebody is not always easy because it can, you can have a mask and you can be perhaps recognized as a bad person. But where is the good part in it? And we want to like to talk about that. And um, so if you go back to the selection of the films we, we did, we, we want to approach it from that side. Why is she selecting those people she uh, invites in her uh, films? Why does she want to talk with them? And what kind of beauty they can tell uh, uh, in the film, uh, tell about in the film, while they are suffering in life. You know, if you become 100, with our film 100 up, your body is suffering. But you have to find something to, to enjoy it or to, to bring the beautiful parts of your existence. And she gives space to that, to the characters, to, to talk about those things. So you have a, a wonderful film. The first film we did together was O Amore Naturel. And uh, it is based on the poems of uh, Carlos Drummond de Andrade. I didn't know the uh, uh, Brazilian writer. So one that was explained to me, she said, uh, I said, so what is the film about? She, she said, well, just before he died, he wrote erotic poems. But nobody was used to that, that he would do those things. Very beautiful erotic poems. They are so beautiful and so erotic. And uh, she said, what my idea for the film is, she says, I want to invite old people, 70, 80 years old, they read the poem, and then I will ask them about their erotic life, how they had the pleasure of sex. And um, I said, that's a great idea. And she said, she always is uh, very nice to me, she said, Within 15 minutes, you decided to, to make the film. She said, let's start tomorrow. And, and so we did. And um, so she asks people when they are 80, a, a, a couple of 80 years old, and they read this erotic poem. And then they look at each other and you feel that those people had a great life and that they enjoyed each other's bodies, you know. Not in a vulgar way, but such how you recognize your own, well, life together with your own partner. Um, and you know that those bodies are old now, 80 years old, you know. So this is what she is always looking. Um, but at the same time, um, and she explains that also, or tries to, to tell something about that in the film, um, is that she is an, an immigrant. She's always, she, she traveled from Peru to another country and end up in Holland. So you feel always the melancholy of life. And I could see it when I met her uh, more than 25 years ago. Then when the sun, you know, at four o'clock, five o'clock, and you're sitting on the terrace and you have this little drink, a wine, a beer, and the sun comes down, you know, the famous, what they call the light is as the, for the best painting, way of painting, eh, the red light. And you feel a little bit this melancholy in your, and you, you think about life and you, you're a little bit sad because you don't have it. But at the same time, your sadness is also a beautiful moment and um, and that's of course always in our film too there's always this kind of make make on melancholy how you call it uh, um, so yeah that's in the film too yeah 
Yeah, and this is a, a, a nice keyword to have that her films are highly emotional, in fact, but it, isn't, uh, it doesn't stop there. There are moments in there, for example, when she discusses her own background, her father um, coming from Europe from a concentration camp to Peru, uh, having difficulties to get ground uh, in Peru and Lima, of course, because he has got nothing with him, he has got no resources, and how this formed also her family and also the din dynamics in the family. And this is a, a very interesting feat. Um, one thing is, uh, so often Hedy said is, she's giving voice to those people who aren't heard. So, um, and she does that because we have the unique moment that we have both films of her, her latest films, 100 Up is in our program, but also the film about herself, No High Camino, is in it. And um, that would be interesting to see when, uh, in, on the one side, she gives a voice to those who aren't heard, and then on the other side, she, gives, she raises her own voice and is sent to stage, which she isn't because the film starts with her in the audience and with a full shot. So um, there, there is a dynamic. This is something, and this is also, um, which is very Hedy Honigman, that there seem to be about something, about street musicians in Paris. But there's so much more behind that. Is that her working mode, that she starts off with a given and develops her ideas and the strengths in the narrative? How does it work? How does she do that? Uh, well, you asked two questions. Yes. So I, I will start first with how she develops an idea. Yes. Um, because in Holland, at least, among the documentary filmmakers, we have this, this famous uh, uh, s s slogan of Hedy that you need a good film idea. So she, she is considered in Holland as the master of a good film idea. So what is a good film idea? If you have erotic poems and you ask old people to read an erotic poem and then talk about their own uh, erotic life, that's a good film idea. You don't make a good uh, film with it if you have only a good uh, film idea, but you need a good film idea. Now, Underground Orchestra was the same thing. She wanted to, to give a voice to all the people who came as immigrants to Europe. The diaspora, this is how you will call it, you know. So then we said, okay, she said, don't you feel the moment, Peter, Peter, if you come to a town and you see a street musician? And sometimes there is a song and you, you're there with this musician. You zoom in with your own mind for five minutes. You're in a hurry, but suddenly you're there because they sing your song, you know? And um, so she said, well, in the underground, there are a lot of, uh, uh, of those musicians. Uh, let's film them. Um, now, so we did research and then of course the idea develops because it seems to be impossible to film all those people in an underground uh, situation. So at the end she invites, she, she, we, I think we, at that time we researched about 50 people uh, musicians, there are, you notice that they are organized a little bit. So we found those characters, asked them to meet with us, to have, let's say, sometimes a lunch with them, to learn them better. And then we stepped into their lives in the upper world. Um, and then you step in their lives, how important music is for them and for us. Now, suddenly, now, in the development of the idea, you see from a single idea, you research it, and then you fit in the complexity. So, our other great filmmaker in Holland, uh, Jan van der Keuken, and I was his producer too, he once made a kind of drawing how the films of Hedy are. And he said the first 
stage is that it is a single idea. So a single line. See my finger. It's like this. Very linear, a simple idea. He says, then she does the research. Then little more things come together. And at the end, when you do the shooting and the editing, then the complexity starts from all those lines. And there, what you say, she tries to get a kind of rich emotion, an emotion that is filled up with different ideas and stories. So perhaps to bring in comparison to what makes it easy to think, if you are on a family party of somebody's birthday, you come in and you give a present and say, happy birthday, it's very simple. But at the end of the day, in a family, all kinds of stories become mixed up and you're crying and you're laughing and you hug each other, but you also have sometimes fight between brothers and sisters. And this complexity is what, what life makes. And, and she tries to, to get this into her films. And, and, and that's why the films, yeah, you say the word uh, emotional, it is true, it is emotional, but with a certain complex in it, what you recognize, you, you see yourself there. Um, so this is how uh, their ideas uh, develop. But sometimes they have, it starts with a very simple uh, idea. So I was talking to you that I, I uh, uh, during the editing process, and we are in Corona. So uh, she was very careful, of course, and uh, so I decided that I would pick her up every day to bring her to the editing and, you know, that everybody feels safe with each other. And we do this little game always. We did for 25 years, coming up with new film ideas, you know. And, um, and then she's very witty. And I said, well, I have an idea. And may I tell it in the car? And then she says, well... I have also a new idea. I said, tell me your idea. So we are changing always ideas, but knowing that it is only an idea. And the next step is always to research and then find the good characters with it. And then you start not doing an interview, but a conversation with her. Uh, she's very clear that in her film, No High Camino, that she said, I never have an interview with people, but we do kind of conversations. And slowly she, she gives the people the, yeah, perhaps to use the modern word safe space in the film, uh, so that people can reflect on themselves. And uh, yeah, that's what I would say is her process of filmmaking. Yeah. And this is a very nice um, uh, point that you say, in effect, in the film in Norhai Kamini, she creates a safe space for herself. And the effect it has is what you described is that you have a film that deals with a disease that can't be cured. She, there is no cure for her. And what you end up is, as you described, is you're all of a sudden at a family party. And this is, I think, exactly how this film works, that you have those given things and they are sad and pity. But as Heidi says in the film, don't don't say that they're sad, don't pity, you know, just make open space for other things that are too and that are true and that are beautiful and are ongoing. So I think uh, this invitation couldn't be a better ending for our brief conversation on Hayden Honigsmann's films. We could go on, of course, and uh, maybe I put this as a little spoiler in that how many little ideas are in that. I thank you so much for your time, Peter. I say goodbye to Amsterdam, enjoy your birthday and Please uh, do, do uh, yes, please, Peter. And may I say a last thing? I, yeah. Of course, I want to uh, give the greetings uh, of Hedy. Yeah. Uh, and when I asked her yesterday, uh, I said, Hedy, uh, do you have something to say? Uh, what I absolutely have to say is then she said to me, uh, don't think this, this is my last film. We start with a new film next week. And I said, well, I'm your producer, let's do it. So uh, you will see you next one next year. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for being with us and thank you for being there for Hedy. And uh, say regards to Amsterdam in the name of all the team. We, okay. get, we miss her. So goodbye. Bye. Bye.
So this was our conversation on No Hay Camino. And please mind that also this film is nominated for the Kino Kino Publikumspreis, uh, presented and sponsored by B. and Dreisat. Um, you can vote on it. Uh, there are informations on that on the site from the film, how to do so. I hope you will see both of the films side by side. No Hay Camino, the film, Hedy Honigmann shot about herself in the of letting someone else making that film, and her latest film, 100 Up, a beautiful film of people who recently turned 100 years old. So enjoy this, and I hope you will see a lot of films at the Documentary Film Festival in Munich. Goodbye.